Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto and today I have Shannon Waller here. She's from Strategic Coach and we are going to talk about a manual called the Scary Times Success Manual that was written by Dan Sullivan and he is the founder of Strategic Coach and there it is and we're going to explain how everyone can download a copy for themselves. So we are going to go through some of your favorite discoveries as, you, as you've uh, done a multiple podcasts and, and topics with, with Dan. And uh, let's get started. So tell me a little bit, Shannon, about yourself and about Strategic Coach for a couple of minutes. Okay, sounds good. I'm Shannon Waller, as you said, and I joined Strategic Coach in July of 1991. Uh, so very long time to, for those of you that can do the math, but I, it's interesting. I feel like Dan, I found Dan and Babs and they found me a little bit. So we've, we've really grown together and strategic coach is a pretty fantastic organization. So our audience, people that we strive to be heroes to are really entrepreneurs. So successful, ambitious, growth oriented entrepreneurs who want to have a much bigger future for themselves and to create a bigger future for their families, their teams, their clients. That's really, you know, who strategic coach is oriented towards. So for me, and I, I'm also passionate, not only about entrepreneurs, but also their team members. Mm -hmm. So that's another aspect that I play with a lot, but have, you know, helping entrepreneurs communicate effectively with their teams and vice versa so that we can really be our best collaborative and most creative selves is what is most exciting to me. And it's interesting because we call this scary times. Mm -hmm. Now, what the cool thing is for anyone who's a business owner, you signed up for scary times, right? You know, we're in a particularly interesting global one at the moment with the pandemic and COVID-19. Uh, so it's for, this is very topical, uh, but really, you know, as, as a small business owner or someone who knows or is close to or participates with one, um, you kind of sign up for that. So I think a lot of what we talk about today will be really relevant for everyone who's had some kind of like setback or when things changed quickly. So it's really relevant to almost everyone. Um, and certainly lots of us have done that. And we're all experiencing it together this time, which is, which yeah. is a new one. So I'm excited. Thank you for inviting me on That's your show. That's great, Shannon. And if people are interested, before we dive in, if they want to download a copy, what's the easiest way? I'm going to put a link under the video, but what's the easiest way to get a copy? Um, Go to strategiccoach.com and under the resources section, there's a whole sec whole part called scary times. Um, so just strategiccoach.com resources and make sure there's two C's in the middle. <laughs> That's the one tricky part uh, of strategic coach. And yeah, then, and, and you'll find all things, videos, audios, our inside strategic po coach podcast, where we did a deep, deep dive into each one of these. And I'll be drawing from some of that today, uh, but just really, really insightful. And I just want to give a little bit of context. Originally, Dan created the scary time success manual annual after 9-11. So we had a number of clients in New York and we scheduled a trip there just to kind of see how they were doing and make sure they were okay. And Dan got started with the first one, which we'll talk about. And they thought, oh, there's actually some more. And so he went and shared that and it just went over like gangbusters because that was an incredibly scary time for everyone in New York. And then they started sending it to their friends and their friends and their friends. So there've been subsequent scary times. We had SARS here in Toronto, which is where I'm, I'm, I'm located. Uh, there's the, the downturn, 2007, eight. Uh, so there's been multiple scary times where we pulled this back out again and then this this hit, we thought still relevant. Uh, so that's that's the origin of the Scary Time Success Manual. That's perfect. So we're going to dive right in. The, the first topic is forgetting about yourself and focusing on others. So Shannon, tell us a little bit about what that means. Oh my goodness. We could spend the whole, the whole time on this one. The, re, the, the focus for a lot of people, and it's very easy, especially when your future just went tilt, you know, everything that you had planned and, and hoped for and forecast all of a sudden got altered and, and sometimes not by you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to go into yourself and to really get a little kind of traumatized, I think for some people, but really the, so this is forget about yourself, focus on others. The much more constructive strategy, which actually ends up benefiting you is to focus on others. How can you be positive? How can you be helpful? And taking that focus off ourselves and, you know, that's, it's not exactly a new thought, but it's really hard to remember mm -hmm. when you're in a crisis mode, but that focusing in on other people could be, and, and often, by the way, the people closest to you. There's the world, but as 
Dan Sullivan likes to say, I don't know the, I don't know the world's phone number or their email address, uh, but we do know that for the people closest to us. And so the, who, are the, who are the people close to you, your family, your friends, your colleagues, your peers, your teammates, um, your patients, you yeah. know, your, your friends, how, what do they need? How can we be helpful and useful for them? And then what's interesting is when we're useful to other people, they say really nice things about us and we start to feel better and we start to you know, not focus on our own issues, but because we're being helpful to others, it really shifts our mindset and our, uh, really benefits us bottom line. Yeah. And that can be both your business, but also in your family. Cause I think a lot of times we can't see each other right now, but you can reach out. Exactly. And the people have done that. You hear about Zoom parties and some cool apps that are out there. And, you know, people are finding new ways to connect. And it's so reassuring. I had a, a friend on LinkedIn that I used to work with. And he goes, you know, I was having kind of a rough day. And then he said, you know, I think I'll just call uh, this person. Then he called the second person. He said, it completely turned my day around. And that he's, his name is Ben. Uh, and Ben just gave it just a, that was a perfect example. By focusing on someone else, mm -hmm. it made him feel better. So. That's great. Very cool. And, and we're going to just go lightly into these and you can yeah. watch more, go to the website and learn more, but forgetting about your commodity and that's whatever business you're in and then focus on once again, the relationship. So let's talk about that. Yes. It's a lot of people get a little panicked about, Oh my gosh, what's my business going to do? And there's some real and very legitimate concerns. If you're a business owner, especially if you're not deemed essential, you know, how do you pivot? How do you transition? How do you adapt? Uh, but one of the interesting strategies here is to actually focus on your relationships a little bit like the others we were talking about. And Dan has a really interesting piece of coaching, very useful for anyone who's in a small business. And that is to reach out to the 20 people who you think are important to your future and actually just connect with them. How are they doing? What are they, you know, what are they seeing? If, if you can help them talk about what their old future was, but what their new future could be mm -hmm. and how, you know, cause that's really what all of us have lost is the future that we anticipated. Yeah. Doesn't mean there can't be a new one. And frankly, sometimes a new and better one. Mm -hmm. I'm actually seeing some new opportunities. I'm like, Oh, this could get bigger, not smaller. In the, you know, there's a little bit of a hiccup on the way there. Um, but really just focus on them. How, you know, how can you be useful to them? How can you be of value to them and help them focus in on their, you know, hopefully, you know, not worse future, but a better future. And sometimes this is a period of creative destruction. So, you know, things are falling apart, but then they're also being reborn. And so how can you really focus in on them? And what are they, what are they worried about? What are they excited about? What are they, what strengths do they have to be maximized? And that's a really powerful conversation. And Dan, just to give you a quick story, Dan recommended that, uh, clients do this when it was still safe to go out and eat mm -hmm. restaurants. Mm -hmm. He said, take, you know, for those of you that have some cash confidence, uh, what I want you to do, he says, I want you to set up in this case today it would be meetings, but you know, those days was take, go take your client, your top people out for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and simply don't talk about you. Yeah. Just talk about them and their future. And the people who went out and did that came back the following quarter and said, we just had the best financial quarter we've ever had. And it was, and they didn't talk a single thing about their business, but they helped give people back their futures. So really just focusing on who are the people that you care most about from in your business sense and focusing on them. It's amazing what, again, but you're not doing it to benefit you. You're doing it to benefit them. But again, the byproducts are pretty incredible. Yeah. It, it's amazing when you spend time with, with others and investing into them, listening, even with patients, a lot of times just yes. listening to them. Yes. It, I think you guys call it, talk about listening deeply. Mm -hmm, we do listen deeply. That helps a lot. I heard an, a new expression. I have to remember who to give credit to. I don't at the moment, but it's, it's listen aggressively. Mm. I'm like, those are not two words I normally put together, but it is that like just really being about them, not about you. And it's kind of amazing what emerges. People are really appreciative and need to be listened to and need to be heard right now. So we have a phenomenal opportunity to create enormous value and confidence for other people. Yeah. That's great. Uh, n number three is forgetting about the sale and then focusing on creating value. I, don't, I think a lot of times we're so busy trying to, whether a profession, trying to sell. And, but what is creating value? Does that involve sales? Do sales come with time? How does that? Sales are actually the byproduct of, of creating value and that, and that deep listening that you're talking about. So when we can help, there's a, there's a couple different strategies for this one. And, and again, I like to get super practical on how people can take action on these. Uh, so first of all, figure out who you want to be a hero to, mm. right? That's, do we want to be a hero to everybody? Well, lots of people are being heroes to us right now. Everyone, everyone on the front lines, 
Yeah. Thank you. Uh, for, and people putting themselves at risk and in the public. I'm really appreciative for people in the grocery store um, checking me out. You know, it's like there's new heroes and garbage collectors and, you know, people like that, um, which I'm thrilled that they're getting their due finally. Uh, but who do you want to be a hero to? Who can you be a hero, a hero to? And then help them reflect on, we call it morale, momentum, and motivation. Mm -hmm. So morale is what are some good things that have happened? A lot of people are having more time with their families. Good time, not just exhausting time. I get to see spring in Toronto. Mm -hmm. That makes me pretty happy. It's gorgeous. And after we got, it, we basically went from winter to summer. Let's be clear. Um, yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, it's beautiful now. Um, so what, what are some good things that have happened? Have, have people done the good things with their health? Have they done great things with their family? Have they picked up a new hobby? Have they transitioned to Zoom? You know, whatever new things that good has happened, really helping people reflect on their, their actual individual specific progress <clears throat> as opposed to just regurgitating what's on the news which is frankly mostly negative really helpful what currently has some traction or momentum lots of things don't but some things do mm -hmm. and then finally what are what are they motivated what are they excited about you know just even having this type of a conversation is huge um, as well as focusing on you know what's their new future what are they worried about what are they excited about what are, what strengths do they have to be maximized phenomenal you know, conversations come out of this and then you'll see immediately how you can help. You'll know how you can create value. And if you can't, you probably know someone else who can. And so, and it's, you get to share our capabilities, and, but then we're pretty resourceful humans. And we also know other people with capabilities. And what's great is when you introduce someone who can help, you know, your friend, your client, whomever, that person gives you the, the, the credit yeah. <laughs> for introducing them. Yeah. So, you know, these are the types of conversations. This is kind of like how to focus on others. Uh, but really it's, it's powerful because when you focus on creating value, it's how do you solve what we call dangers, what people are worried about opportunities. How do you, how do you, you know, grow those capture those, we call, you know, that's what people are excited about. Mm -hmm. And then finally, how do you help them maximize their strengths out of that conversation? You'll see, Almost, well, I'm not gonna say unlimited opportunities to create value, but lots of opportunities to create value for people. Sometimes, some of them you'll get paid for, some of them you won't, but I guarantee you'll be incredibly useful to others and they'll share that appreciation back with you. And, and it feels good. Feels fantastic. Oh my gosh, getting out of our own heads, <laughs> so great. And then when you can help someone else, Oh my gosh, you 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 feel like a hero. How good yeah. how good is that right now? Yeah, yeah. And, and like you said, I a lot of times with, with patients, you you can treat the problem, but how can you be a hero to them? What what is their real desire? A lot of times it's something else. Yeah. Not just their well, well that's such a great point. And but unless you're unless you're focusing on that deep listening that you talked about, and unless you're you're you've suspended your own self-interest, you're gonna miss all the cues. Yeah. And both of you will leave dissatisfied. You won't get what you want and they sure as heck won't get what they want. Um, so it really, it's a shift of mindset into who's important in this moment. And it's mm -hmm. not, it's not the person in your chair. <laughs> so, but, but again, the, all the byproducts are, are incredibly rich. So it, yeah, it's, it's a shift of mindset and an incredibly powerful one. Yeah, and it, I, I, we've been reading a little bit. It's very similar to motivational interviewing. We learned that as physicians. Oh like yeah. How to do change talk. And so you can hear what they're saying if they're ready to change because you can't move right. someone if they're not ready. Same thing. You find whatever they're passionate about and you build on that, build on the strengths, whatever they're doing. Perfect. Yes. Let's go now here to forgetting about your losses because people may have lost a lot during this time yeah. and focus on the opportunities. Are there new opportunities? How do you do that? How do you get out of the brain and figure out I missed so much these last couple of months? What are the new opportunities that have arised? Well, it's interesting because we, there's, there's a really difference between the general narrative and your specific one. And so I think, again, please turn off the news channels, <laughs> unless you're watching this. Uh, but I think, you know, it, it's interesting because there's a general and then you can get, people can get themselves into a state and get very anxious about loss. Uh, but again, as I said, it is a period of creative destruction. And, but there's a lot of new things emerging too. So to getting really specific about what's working for you right now and what's not. Mm -hmm. um, and then the brain is kind of an amazing instrument. It responds incredibly well to questions. So when you ask, okay, what's working right now? So take your business if you, if you have one or your, it could be your family life or mm -hmm. homeschooling or whatever situation you find yourself. What's working about it and what's not 
And then, okay, what, what can I do to keep what's working? Cause you don't want to throw the baby out with the bath water on this one. Yep. And then how can I take one or two of those things that's not working? You don't have to take the whole laundry list all at once. And then, okay, what's, what's one of those things I can transform? Well, that gets us into action. So you're taking the emotion, you're thinking about it, and then you're getting into action about it. Well, that's a pretty good way to transform just about anything. Um, so really get helping, you can do this for yourself, brilliant to do with your family. We have a tool about it called the Experience Transformer in the Strategic Coach Program. And you know, it's my favorite learning tool. But, but again, bottom line, what's working, what's not, knowing what I know now, what would I do differently next time? bam. And then you go. And you can so, do it on anything, anything in life. Oh, I've transformed vacations that did not go the way <laughs> that we wanted them to. Um, teamwork situations. Um, I actually like doing it not just myself on my own, but I actually get, we get teams together. Yeah. It's great after a client event. Uh, it's one of these incredibly versatile, useful ways of just learning from your experience. And it means that you start to welcome every experience because you know that you can always maximize your learning. Yeah, You know, the situations we reflect back on and don't like are the ones we haven't learned anything from. Yeah, And so it all becomes amazing raw material for, for growth. When no, no Shannon, can people do this in their head or is it better to write down? What's your opinion? 100% writing it down. Mm -hmm. 100%. And better to actually write. Mm -hmm. Typing. Type. Yeah, there's a whole... There's a whole science behind this. It's tied to the Broca part of the brain, mm -hmm. whatever your dominant hand is, and which is 40% uh, controls language, just so you're aware. Uh, but there's a whole different process that happens when we're actually writing. And even if it's messy, even if you're the only person who can read it, it's totally fine. Uh, but the other thing, and the reason for this, and, and one of our brilliant team members, Corey, asked Dan, Dan, why do you have people write stuff down? He said, oh, so they can get um, emotional perspective on their thoughts. And I was like, oh, I never knew that after 20 years. And it's true. You, when, we, when they're running around up here, they're kind of jumbly. There's some emotions tied with some thoughts, not so much with others. And then when you write it down, you actually get some perspective. You get some mm. distance from them. And then you're like, oh, that makes sense. That doesn't. I want to take action on this one. Eh, that's not really so important. Mm. But we don't actually get perspective until we physically get some distance from it. Um, so great question. Thank you. Uh, because most people don't think about it. I had certainly hadn't until Dan said it. Uh, but so I find physically writing, it's probably why journaling is so recommended by so many people. Yeah. I'm terrible at it. Uh, but I do like doing using our thinking tools like I can and will do those. Um, so yeah, just that perspective on your thoughts makes it way different. And then you can get way smarter, lot, yeah. really fast, which I enjoy. Yes. Perfect. Wonderful. And, and people want to learn more about an experience transformer. You can go to the website and learn more. Uh, a lot of learning. Yeah, it's, it's one that's not available in book form yet, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So you'd have to join strategic coach. Uh, but it's, but again, it's just what I told you. It's what's yep. working. What's the situation? What's working? What's not? And by the way, when you define the situation, don't spend forever on it. Just a couple, couple sentences. What worked about it? Because even in bad situations, it wasn't all terrible. And even in great situations, there were a few things that could be improved. Yeah. So what worked or what didn't or what's working, what's not. And then this is where you get to brainstorm. You know, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? And that's kind yeah. of your improvement ideas. And then you, of course, choose the, which strategies you want to put into place. So yeah. that actually is the tool, even if I can't give you the piece of paper. Uh, but it's a brilliant thinking tool. And I, it's my, as I, you, you and I both really love learning from it. Yeah. It's my, it's my go-to. And along with that, we're going to talk not about the difficulty, what didn't go well, but the progress. So forgetting yes. about your difficulty, focusing on, on the positive or, or, or the progress. How, how do you, how do you do that? Everything's wrong. How do you focus on the positive? I know you have the win streak. That's one of the apps, the, the positive yeah. focus, one of the other focuses we have within coach. Well, it's, there are a lot of difficulties and some of the things that used to be easy are now hard. Grocery shopping. <laughs> Okay. One of the, you know, you, there's lighting up involved and there's, you know, goodness, in practice, you've got PPE protocols yep. to follow. There's all of this stuff. This you're like, oh. patients. Yep. Mm -hmm. exactly. You space people out really differently. And so it's very different. There's a lot to adjust and adapt to. Now, humans have been around whatever your belief system for a long time because we're so adaptable. Mm -hmm. So we can do it if we have to have the will. But a lot of it is the commitment to growth. So all of us have been taken out of our previous kind of set of capabilities and things we're confident about. And now we're putting into a new situation. So I'd love to share Dan's four C's Please. growth formula here because mm -hmm. it's just the best. Um, so I don't know about you, but I really like feeling confident, capable and confident. 
most people would sign up for that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're thrust to the bottom of the learning curve where we don't know how to do these protocols, what's socially appropriate, what's not. Um, I could go on. Uh, but it's interesting. If we really make a commitment, it starts with commitment. And mm -hmm. commitment comes from your gut, not just your head, not just your heart. This is your gut. This is your will mm -hmm. being exerted here. You have to make a commitment. And then we have to be willing, if we're going to grow, to go through a period of courage. Yeah. Now, the problem with courage is it doesn't feel very good. Right. It feels like the opposite of confidence. There's mm -hmm. some descriptors that are inappropriate for television <laughs> that I could use, but fill in your blank for that one. Uh, but if we're willing to go for fully committed, by the way, you, you can, we can go through long, long periods of courage or short ones. Okay. Um, the more full your commitment, more 100% committed you are, the shorter the period of courage is what we mm -hmm. find. Uh, because as soon as you're in the situation, you're like, okay, it's like jumping in the deep end, like you better learn how to swim pretty fast, right? don't drown. Uh, but it's interesting. So you'll, you'll develop those capabilities really, really quickly. And, and sometimes they might be a little, you know, you might tumble as you're learning to walk, you have to fall down a few times, but pretty quickly you'll get on your feet with whatever the new protocol is, whatever the new capability yep. is. So that's how we develop capabilities. And then we do that for a while and then we have a whole new level of confidence. And then guess what? We're willing to take on a new level of commitment and courage. So that's how, if you look back, if we were to you know, talk to people like, what are some, what are some capabilities that you do, you have that you're confident about? You know, do you remember when you didn't have that? Did you make a commitment? What was the period of courage? What did that feel like? And people look back and they're like, oh yeah, sorry. That's how I did it. Yeah. And like, mm -hmm. and guess what? Going forward, that's exactly how you do it again. But we just have to be willing to make that commitment to growth and to change. And you, you're in a profession where people have to be committed right? In order, to, in order to achieve and to change, as you said. So that's one of the things to really check out. And some people would rather, we're going to talk about complain or gratitude, complaints mm -hmm. or gratitude at the end. Uh, but some people would rather not, they just rather suffer. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the opposite of commitment, courage, capability, and confidence. Or being a, a, a victim, right? Exactly. No growth there. Not, not happening. <laughs> so I would much rather focus on um, opportunities and, and, you know, things that we can gain rather mm. than just the difficulties because you can transform those. You know, it's yeah. pretty, pretty powerful when you're like, Oh, okay. That was a problem last week. It's not a problem now. Yeah. Gives you yeah. a lot of confidence. Sure does. And, and how about now with, with everything that we're going through, a lot of times, a lot of us plan for the future, yep. but why is it so important to focus on, on today? Planning is important, but uh, how, how do yep. you focus more on today? That's one of the next. Uh, yeah. So this is number six. And this is interesting because I have a lot of, friends and with incredible planning capabilities and they're struggling <laughs> because the future that they thought they could count on is changing. There's so much that's unpredictable. Yeah. And so that can be really disheartening. It can be anxiety producing lots of not good things. However, it is pretty brilliant for getting you back in the moment. Hmm. So if you think about it, what, what do we actually have control over for ourselves? Well, it's probably about the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You know, is we can I, we can decide what time we're going to go to bed. We can decide what, what time we're going to get up. We can decide what we're going to do the next 24 hours and what, you know, how we're, what we're going to take action on, you know, who we're going to spend time with on Zoom or wherever. Uh, so we, we have control over our own 24 hours. Yeah. And so one, and this I think is actually really wise coaching or insight for any scary times when the future is unpredictable. You don't know when things are going to reopen. Uh, some people I know are getting tired of the term new normal. So it's the next normal, which I think is a great one. My friend Tara came up with that. And, you know, so what's the next normal, but we don't know, you know, and, and governments and, you know, governing bodies aren't super clear either. News is changing daily. Uh, so what do we have? What do we actually have control over? We have control over ourselves um, and we can have control over the next day next 24 hours. So that's really, that's where you have power. That's where you have action. Can you control, you know, when this is going to open or that's going to open? Nope. Yeah. But so sometimes we have to kind of forget about that. No, don't give up on it. That's not what we're talking about, but focus on what you can actually input or impact. And so it's really about looking at your positive, um, I've got a little list here, achievements, uh, positive messages that you can give to other people, uh, positive progress that you're making. Again, you might be crawling and then walking and then finally running. Um, and then also, you know, just your environment and the people around you. You know, it's pretty interesting. People who are complaining a lot or not, or focusing on the negative, um, that conversation gets a little tired 
after a while. And we're going to want to look for and be around people who have a more positive, more positive approach. Even if it's small little incremental areas, that's, that's more fun. It's more interesting after a while than talking about all the negative stuff. You know, I think about that. I've been more time with my kids these days. And yeah. how do you, we, we, we used to talk about what are the three good things that happened today? Yeah. To, to teach them that new habit, it's, it's kind of a challenge because they're, for some reason, they're hardwired to, oh, this didn't work. Or some are positive, some aren't, but they, it's, it's a skill. It, it takes practice. It's a muscle. It's a muscle. And Thank it you. is super, yeah, it's super important to, to strengthen it. And do, do bad things happen? all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and I think to expect anything different is unrealistic, but how are we using that? You know, how are we using that raw material kind of going back to our transforming experiences idea? And then, but if, if you also are unable, if you haven't trained your mind to look for what is working and for what progress, well, first of all, you're going to depress yourself and probably depress other people around you yeah. and come across as being negative. And I have two, well, I'm a 17 and a 20 year old. Okay. So I know, angsty teenagers, both girls in my case. Um, and, and, you know, it's interesting because I, I started doing this when they were little. And my one girl would always love to talk about, we called it roses and thorns. Okay. But she would dwell on those thorns. Those were things, I'm like, okay, can we just focus on what did work today? Uh, it was really interesting. So yeah, sometimes there's a little, they have to, that muscle is really strong. We have to help develop the, the focusing on progress. Because in, and when you transform a negative, it becomes progress. So I don't, I don't like people being stuck in that kind of victim we, mode we were talking about. Yep. And we say that all the time at home. What could you do? And, and now the problem is, now my kids tell me this. They said, well, you know, I get mad at them and they say, daddy, next time I'm going to do it this way. They're, they're always saying, next time we'll do it this way. Next time it's experience transform. I said, well, what can you do different next time? He said, well, next time I'm not going to hit my brother. Or they... <laughs> and, but it's, 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 it's entwined in their mind of, of how to get back, but they use my words against against me sometimes. I love it. Well, high five on the parenting on that one. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, yeah, and, and, and not getting stuck, I think, is the point. And I, and I think there's a lot of reinforcement for, we, Dan and I were just talking this morning about complaining and negativity. There's a lot of, of external messaging of blaming other people out in the world. So people taking responsibility for changing the, themselves is a different conversation that, again, people need to strengthen their muscles for. Yeah. So for those that are just tuning in, we're talking about the Scary Times Success Manual. You can get it at strategiccoach.com under uh, the Success Manual, Scary Times Success Manual. I have uh, Shannon Waller with me here. We're just going to conclude here with the last topic about avoiding complaints and I think ending on gratitude. I think that's the key. Any tips for gratitude? I have a gratitude journal. Um, there's a lot of different ways, the positive focus, win streak. Any any great thoughts for being grateful? Um, well, it's, it, I think it's important to... I, appreciate how humans work uh, or how our minds work and emotions work is that you it's actually almost impossible to be grateful and negative at the same time so or it's a, or anything else yeah exactly it's actually a very high level of i don't know what you want to call it uh, it's a high state to be in and so when we're coming from gratitude we're not focusing on our losses we're not focusing on who we were we're not focusing on what we don't have our difficulties what we're focusing on is what we do have yeah. and i have to say you know comparing where i'm having to shelter in place self-isolate we call it in canada um i am so lucky oh my goodness you know there's so much to be grateful for right now am i somewhat frustrated momentarily uh but i'm actually getting more and more and more grateful the longer this goes on which is really interesting. So there's just umpteen, you know, things to be grateful for, including the technology that allows you and I to talk right now. Yeah, I think it's right? up a lot of things. We, some friends and I were socially distancing last night, socializing, and we're saying if this had happened 10 years ago, our, my business would be impacted differently. Yours would be impacted yeah. differently. It's like, thank goodness we have so many technological capabilities. We're all on the same learning curve at the same time. But again, it's that mindset, it's that perspective to really, you know, are we, are we focusing on what we do have? Are we, are we expressing appreciation? And appreciation has a neat meaning. There's to appreciate something, which is mm -hmm. often expression of emotion. But when we appreciate, like I think it's like a stock, when the stock appreciates, it increases in value. Mm -hmm. So when we appreciate those things around us, like me 
getting to see spring for a change, um, you know, it increases in value. And so yeah. if we do that with our people around us, with our, with our kids, with our spouse, with our environment, um, it's really powerful. And I think that's what a lot of people, I, I'm hearing on the good news stories, yeah. people are appreciating some of the things that they completely whizzed by before, including, you know, grocery clerks and yeah. people picking up the garbage and our real heroes, we're starting to appreciate those small things that, you know, as busy driven people, we didn't take the time for before. So I think there's enormous opportunities for gratitude, but writing it down like you do in a journal, mm -hmm. best thing ever. I do that every morning. Yeah. Um, it just keeps you focused. It builds that, that track That's in your so. mind to focus on, again, what you do have and what to be appreciative of rather than other things. Well, well Shannon, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm appreciative for your time. And this is Shannon Willer from Strategic Coach. And uh, people can go to strategiccoach.com to learn more. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you so much. This went by really quickly. I really appreciate it. <laughs> hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're going to find a few links here I'd like to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.